Good evening, all. I wrap Steen of Linen Associates with your Spider ETF wrap up for this Monday, the 11th of October, 2021. All right, my friends, I really shouldn't be here right now. I thought I was going to be at the Chicago White Sox playoffs, but it rained so much they called the game. Uh, time that they were going to begin about 2.40 in the afternoon, it would still be, uh, I wouldn't be here. But they'll play tomorrow and I'm not going to that game. I have business appointments and other things. I'll miss it, but it's life. Okay, so as we look at what's going on, there's a key word that you have to start paying attention to. It's called inflation. And it's coming about, markets think, because of energy. What's the solution to high energy prices? High energy prices. The higher they go, the better the solution's gonna come. It's gonna come from more energy. For those of you that subscribe to my full research report, which is primarily uh, what I write, it covers spiders, ETFs, and futures, all of them. I write about this, and I write that the fact that you're going to get the independent, the Lone Ranger, that's what you got to think about it. The Lone Ranger is coming down there. could be uh, Hopalong Cassidy, could be Roy Rogers, the eras that I grew up with. The independents are coming back. And they're coming back in a way where they're saying, you know, I don't have to pay shareholders. I don't have to worry about what my bare balance sheet looks like. I don't have to put up with these big banks. They either want to give me the money or they don't want to give me the money. I own the land. I have the well. I need money to produce it. And I have $80 crude oil. Now, let me think if I'm a banker. If I get those assets, how much risk do I have? Not much. Guess who's coming to the rescue? That's what's going to happen. U.S., you watch over the next six months, going to produce a lot more oil, more than you're hearing. The numbers will creep on you, but that's what I suspect is going on. But there's more going on. This inflation is working through everything. At first, we were worried about wage inflation. I'm not as worried about it as people. Let me tell you, those that want to work should get a fair wage. Why not? Do I think that you're going to keep getting people running to the market? You know, I'm questioning it. I'm wondering how many people, because of COVID, are working from home. And they're not going back to those service jobs and whatever jobs they have. They're running around. They're doing landscaping in the neighborhood. They're doing curtain installations. They're doing others. They're not registering as private companies. They're private entrepreneurs. How many of them are there? Otherwise, why aren't these people coming back to work? Then you get my age group. So let's call the war babies that wanted to keep working. How many of them have just said, enough's enough, I quit? That part is going on. So the workforce is shrinking. The jobs are still there. And America's going to have to figure out a way without it. If I'm wrong, we should see it very quickly because we know that those $300 a week checks are over. And there's already talk in Congress, are we still paying too much for people? to uh, stay home? Or is it still COVID? You know, we still have had a lot of COVID. I'm one that believes if the FDA will approve for five to 12 year old children, the shot, we're gonna see less COVID. I don't know three years down the road, just the way you don't know or whatever, what this stuff in our body's gonna do to us. So if you're asking me, do I just believe ah, it's all gonna be fine? I don't know. But I know this, I grew up with people with TB, polio, which most of you don't know about. All you need to do is see some of this and you go, it isn't worth living in, a, in one of these big iron lungs and all that. For me, it wouldn't have been and it would still not be. So COVID still, to me, get a vaccine. My choice. Microsoft, you filled this gap. You're ready to stall. That's what the market is saying. You had a big outside day down today. What's an outside day? It's when you take out a previous day's high and low you close down, so it's an outside day down. Ideally, you close also under the opening in the market. So uh, that, that's the other thing you always want to look at. In this market, you opened at 292.92 and rallied. Is it a traditional outside day down? No. The fact that the market closed above the opening is always questionable, but I don't... On a scale of nine that it's an outside day down, uh, I may get an eight, okay? So it's still there, but you always pay attention. What you don't want to take out is today's high. If you do, that gives the bull the impetus to the upside. 
So if the market's going to pull back here and stall, which it did with that outside day, you now have a higher high, lower low, you're not trending. Where do you think the battleground's going to be? I'll tell you. It's a secret. It's red. The 18-day moving average of closes. That's where I think your battleground's going to be for a while. You are through at this moment, at least, hitting these lower Bollinger Bands. I can't imagine what would drive the market down there. It could happen, but it's going to need something else. I understood this break. Next one would be different. And I think you're just going to drift around for a little bit because momentum's pointing up. See, back here, I had a better story. The market started turning down. The sell signals came in. You're bounced to the 18-day average. Everything was working there. Now you're sort of a different chart picture. So let the mishmash take place. How do you like that for a professional word? Apple, similar to Microsoft. Higher high, lower low. Battleground right here. Two support levels, the 100-day average, the lower Bollinger Band, but no trend. So no, you had a contra trend move to the upside. Why a contra trend? You were under the 18-day moving average this whole time with the buy signal, where it should stall, in my theory at least, is the 18-day average, and then try to figure out whatever's going to be next. That's where you're at. Arc probably seen the worst of this sell-off too. And I said that when we took out right here, follow me. Bingo, when you took that out. So as far as I'm concerned, this whole break has run its course. Uh, and wouldn't surprise me if you get to that 18-day average, if you get there and stall out. It needs to do a lot more work here. XLI, you actually turned the industrial sector chart bearish. You've got lower highs, lower lows. It's fully countered. Because the bias is up, you didn't close under 99.88, do so, and I get bearish on the chart looking for these numbers right in through here. First battleground, 18-day average of closes. Semiconductors. So we had a rally. The market had been in a downtrend, oversold. You get this rally, you stall out, and that's all you've done. You have no downtrend, no uptrend. You're sort of in the middle of no man's land. CMBS, these are the get high stocks. Okay, they're too oversold to sell, so I don't think you want to get high on that, but the trend is down and the bias is down. XHB, the home builders. Okay, we've had this contra trend move to the upside that stalled out right at the combination of the 18 and the 100 day average of closes. There's nothing on this chart. I welcome you to make the best you can out of nothing. Enjoy yourself. XLE, the energy sector, when and if, and it will happen, the red line closes back under 79, I think you'll get a correction that will have a target of wherever that 18-day average is. But until then, each one of these breaks, in my opinion, and that's what I've been telling my subscribers in the morning, is a buy. I won't tell you where I've been telling them. It's a record. They have the recording, so it's all there. Emerging markets, trend-ended. Follow me, follow me, Johnny Angel, all the way down, hits the lower band. What if you take out right through there, the 5013 level? Do you agree that would break the pattern of lower highs? Done. Where should the market stall? My theory is the 18-day average of closes. I don't feel too bad about that. You're waiting for the new game to develop, okay? Don't. Be in a rush. There's always another plane, train, unless you're with Southwest Airlines. Now you don't have that other plane. Why fly that airline? Nobody else is having the problem they are. Don't bar me, Southwest, but I rarely follow you. I fly you. Higher high, lower low. I always like an assigned seat. I always felt that I had a run in there. I was part of a herd. What, what, what am I going to do? I hated that whole setup. Um, so I see the market just sort of drifting around here, not doing an awful lot. Gold miners, well, they're backing off, but it's still a friendly chart. You have the trend up, the bias up, supports back at 3004. Until you get back under 2917, you look good. Momentum in the chart, not overbought. So I think the pros, I think they're still going to look at these miners with a friendly face. But I think that friendly face turns into the scroll. <sighs> TLT, interest rates, why would they go up in this environment? 
They're creeping, and that's the good word. They're creeping down. They're not collapsing, and you're getting these rushes that will shake up the economy. The market's giving time to adjust to higher rates. FXE, well, take a look yourself. How do you... How do you get bullish on the euro that doesn't want to raise interest rates? That, that seems to be what Ms. Lagarde is basically saying. Higher U.S. rates, still a relatively stronger U.S. economy, and you want to be friendly to that. I can understand short covering. I can't understand how you get bullish a market like that. So you put it all together, my friends, and you try to come up with a game plan. Now, I have a plan for you. Our website's going to take a change for you sometime tonight. We're going to be given the landing page, a whole new look so you can see the YouTube and everything else there. In the meantime, before you go there, you might want to take a look at this. It's our enhanced Bollinger Band course so that you learn to master these Bollinger Bands. It's not that difficult. It's eight videos, totally inexpensive, and I think I'll give you a master's degree in it. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a good day. Welcome. I'm Ira Epstein, and I'm here to talk about my enhanced Bollinger Band course. Now, many of you have taken my regular charting course, and if not, you might think you know something about Bollinger Bands. As you know, Bollinger Bands are an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within it 95% of the time. And on a chart, it will offer on the top part resistance, on the bottom support, and the ideas the market will travel within them. We know that sometimes it latches onto that band, goes up or goes down. Well, how do you play with that? Can you pyramid the positions off that type of thinking? Well, I've applied all three of these into 13 different videos that teach you my concept of it. And from that concept, you're able to work with weekly charts and or daily charts. The 13 videos, each about seven minutes long. The idea here is not to put you in school forever, but to teach. Now. If you haven't tried my complete futures research, I throw that in as well. Whether you've tried this or not, I think it's worth taking a look at. I think you're going to learn something from there. That research, by the way, covers twice daily market updates for you and access to what I call window envelope numbers, which I think are very important when looking at these Bollinger Bands. The next part is a trial to our charting software so you can make your charts look the same way that I do. It's that simple. Where do you go with it and how do you get all this? It's simple. You go to our website, www.iraepstein.com. If you go to the word education, everything you need is answered there. You can also call my staff. They'll be happy to help you get set up. I'm Ira Epstein on the road to your education.